cloud technology is enabling a higher level of agility for banks developing and deploying new applications. And one key impact is the ability to react to client demands more swiftly. Another is that those applications known as APIs can have a significant effect on how clients use products and services. At the same time, blockchain is creating a significant opportunity for the payment space. Well, to examine those key issues, we're joined to the studio by um, Umar Farouk. Now, he's head of digital treasury services and head of blockchain at JP Morgan. So welcome to Cyboss TV. Thank let's, you. Let's look at the cloud and API technology. What roles do they have in supporting and transforming transaction banking? I think, frankly, you said it very well. It's uh, one of them is about agility. So cloud is all about getting there quickly. Whatever our clients need, uh, we want to make sure we solve those needs really fast. And cloud enables us, both from uh, the point of view of getting infrastructure, building applications, everything is just faster. And uh, APIs is, you know, gives our clients more diversity. Different ways to connect to us, different ways to use our applications, our systems. And so when we think of clients, and frankly, clients is where it all starts, we think about delivering something quickly and then delivering a thing in the way they want. So whatever uh, capability they want to use, APIs helps us do that. How is JP Morgan engaging to enable these changes? I think both these are frankly very big initiatives for us. I mean, JP Morgan has a very, very big footprint in technology. I mean, our annual spend on technology across the firm is somewhere in the neighborhood of $12 billion. And we have about 50,000 technologists, which makes us frankly bigger than most technology companies in the world. And cloud and APIs are you know, pretty very high on our list of things to invest in. So when you think of cloud, for instance, um, we've taken a lot of steps towards making it a reality. And we are, we are big enough that we've actually built an internal cloud infrastructure that gets you the agility without introducing some of the risks that you get with the public uh, infrastructure. And then as far as APIs are concerned, about uh, you know a couple of years back, we decided this was the wave of the future for transaction banking clients. And over the last two years, I think we've gone from being, you know, dabbling in APIs to now I think we have probably one of the biggest and most uh, uh, broad suite of APIs in the world. Mm, so staying ahead of the curve effectively. Yes. But I mean, look, wh wh what are the lines between competitive drivers and cooperative drivers when you're developing these technologies? I think, frankly, um, there's a lot of room for cooperative drivers here. Uh, if you think about something like APIs or even if you think about cloud, things like cybersecurity, things like standards, need to be uh, you know, more cooperative across banks. When you think about APIs, obviously we will have products that we want to deliver to our clients. Our, you know, our competitors have their products that they want to deliver, but what we want is standards in the industry so the clients don't have to pick and choose and get tied into ecosystems which are uh, ultimately in the long term not beneficial. So when we build APIs, we use a lot of ISO standards which are very you know, sort of well known in the industry. And I think as we go forward, we are working with lots of our peers across the globe on thinking about how the overall standards should evolve. What do you see are, are the benefits for your clients as, as JP Morgan evolves? I think if you ask our clients, they would tell you, especially on the API front, they have seen a night and day difference in terms of how quickly they could connect to us. We've had clients even, you know, actually given that we are sitting in London, we've had clients in Europe and the UK where uh, in the past, you know, if we had to implement a new relationship, we might have taken weeks to implement them or even months to get new, new capabilities. And now we can do that in days or sometimes even, you know, sort of within a week, we can go live with new capabilities. So that's a huge deal for clients. I think the other thing is there are capabilities that our clients, frankly, had not seen in the past. So if you think about things like entitlement, so it's a bit of a boring topic, but when you're a large corporate, and you have lots of people who can use JP Morgan's capabilities from that large corporate. If someone leaves that corporation, it used to be a bit of a clunky process for them to inform us that someone has left so they couldn't access the accounts anymore. And now they can do that with the push of a button in their HR system. So things have really gotten much more integrated for our clients. And I think uh, our mantra always has been, you know, sort of from top down at JP Morgan, faster, better, cheaper. And I think that's what we're trying to do. Agility, in other words. Agility. <laughs> but I mean, y you are a blockchain specialist, and what, what really fascinates me is the role of blockchain in terms of the opportunities for this technology when you look at that banking landscape, landscape but more specifically, the transaction banking area. So I think, first of all, I'd say, I mean, we, we probably have the biggest blockchain team across any financial institution in the world at this point. 
but even then I would tell you that the, the technology is still being, it's still in evolution. It's not mature yet. It's still in its infancy. Yeah, it's in infancy. And there's very few things in the world that actually need a blockchain. It can make things better, but there's not a lot of applications where it's essential. And I think over the last five years, we've gone from what used to be a hammer looking for a nail to now knowing exactly where to deploy it. And when you look at transaction banking, for instance, our own network, the Interbank Information Network, or IN, as we call it, um, has grown to more than 330 banks that are you know, joining um, the, the network. We have about 60-some live. And that network is used for exchanging messages in a point-to-point, -point, highly secure, encrypted fashion, which only blockchain technology can actually deliver easily. So that's how we think about it. And I think from our point of view, payments landscape will evolve and become a lot more efficient and a lot faster and cheaper with blockchain over time. As you say, it is evolving. It is in its infancy. So to play devil's advocate, if you will, would, does blockchain provide opportunities to expedite regulatory compliance, or does it add to regulatory burden and introduce some complexity? I think from our point of view, we've actually very explicitly used our network in, in, an, in a construct which helps compliance. So our first application on the network is to find uh, answers to sanctions queries where some payment gets stuck because someone has a name that's on some list, either US, UK, or some other country, and we can resolve that query in minutes versus days because of the network. So in our view, every technology is two-sided. If you use it the right way, it's in, it will help compliance. If you use it the wrong way, it'll make it less efficient. So our view has always been to go with the former. I couldn't really fault that advice, that yeah. sounds pretty good to me. But so. Umar Farouk, we have to leave it there. That was Umar Farouk, who's head of digital treasury services and head of blockchain at JP Morgan. Thank you so much for joining us and thank have a great Cyboss. Thank, thank you. Thank you for having me. Cheers, Thanks. thank you.